Today we're going to be teaching you how to use operations to solve one-step equations. But in order to do that, we first have to recap on what inverse operations are, which are operations that undo each other. Just as a reminder, addition goes along with subtraction and multiplying goes along with division. Therefore, adding and subtracting are inverse operations and multiplying and dividing are inverse operations. So now let's try our first example. Example one gives you x plus three is equal to eight. So there are two methods in which we solve it. The first method we would do is we are going to first see what operation is in front of the number on the same side as our x. As you can see, this is the addition symbol. The inverse operation of addition is in fact subtraction. So we must subtract the three from the left side in order to get our x by itself. Remember, the goal with solving one-step equations is to always get your variable alone. Now, whatever we do to one side, we must also do to the, to the other. So since we already subtracted negative three on the left side, we must also subtract three on the right side. Now, we know that three minus three, in fact, is zero. So we simply bring down our x. Then we must also bring down our equal sign. And then we can simply see that eight minus three is five. So our final answer is x equals five. The other method we would like to teach you is known as the mapping method. So first thing that we always do is start with our variable and then we go to our solution. Now, the question of the matter is, how do we get from our variable to our solution? In this example, we have to first add three. So we draw our mapping from x plus three to get eight. But now, since we want to figure out what our x is equal to, we must work in reverse. So if we go back from our 8 to our x, we do our inverse operation, which is subtract 3. Then we know that 8 minus 3 is, in fact, equal to 5. And as you can see, no matter which method we use, we get the exact same answer on both sides. Now, in order to check to make sure that our work is correct, all we simply need to do on the side of our paper is to write the word check and we must show our work. So we have the problem x plus 3 equals 8. Since we know that x is equal to 5, we simply substitute in wherever we see an x we put a 5 and we want to say well does this in fact equal 8? 5 plus 3 is 8 so you know that that checks out. Now let's move on to example number 2. In this case, you notice that the operation on the inside of our problem attached to our x is in fact a minus. So as stated in the beginning, the inverse operation of subtraction is addition. So in this case, we're going to add our 4 to both sides. Because remember, our goal is to always get our variable, or in this case our x, by itself. Now when we do minus 4 plus 4, those will cancel out to give a 0. So we simply bring down our x, then keep your equal sign, and then we do 10 plus 4, which is in fact 14. So our final answer in this case would be x equals 14. Now, for our visual learners, we will also be incorporating the mapping method for this one. So remember, we first start off with our variable, then we say that our solution in this case was 10. So our original problem tells us that we are subtracting our x by 4 in order to get our 10. So when working in reverse, we must perform the inverse operation, which in this case would be plus 4, to see that x is equal to 14. Now, if we were to check using the mapping method, we simply erase our original variable, and then we insert our solution, which in this case was 14. And we can clearly see that 14 minus 4 gives us 10, and if going in reverse, 10 plus 4 will give us our 14, so that in fact works out. Now let's go on to example 3. In this case, you see that this example, in between the 3, which is our coefficient, and the variable, this is multiplication. So, as discussed in the beginning of this video, we can clearly see that the inverse operation of multiplication is division which means in this case we are going to divide both sides by 3 in order to get our variable alone. Now 3 divided by 3 as you all know is 1 then we simply keep our variable x 
bring down your equal sign, and then just do the division. 24 divided by 3 is 8. Now, as you all know, if you have a coefficient of 1, you can also simply write the x by itself and have it equal to 8. So your final solution here is x equals 8. Now, in order to the, do the mapping, we always start with our variable, and then we start with our solution. Now we say, what is happening to the x in order to get to the 24? In this case, we are multiplying by 3. So now when working in reverse, the inverse operation is going to be to divide by 3. And if we do 24 divided by 3, we get that x is equal to 8. Now, don't forget, when you are done with your problem, you must check your solution. So in this case, we will do it with the first original way to do it. So we write our check, and this is going to be by substitution. So wherever we see an x, we are going to put the number 8. And do not forget your parentheses, because that is very important. Now we are going to ask ourselves, is 3 times 8 equal to 24? And in fact, it is. So we know that we did our problem correctly. Now onto our final example. In this case, you notice a fraction as a coefficient. So in this case, it is one half. Now, we also know that the operation in between any coefficient and a variable is in fact multiplication. So there are two ways that we could do this one since we are working with fractions. The first way that we are going to do this is to divide both sides by one half. So we know that one half divided by one half is one. Then we must keep our variable x. Then keep the equal sign. And we know that nine over one divided by one half is the same as doing nine times two over one. So in this case, x is going to equal 18, and that is our final solution. Now, for the final thing, we're also going to show the mapping. So once again, we start with our variable, followed by our solution, and we say what is happening to our x in order to get to our solution. So in this case, we are multiplying both sides by 1 half. Then the inverse operation here is to divide by one half. So once more time, nine over one divided by one half is the same as nine over one times two over one. And by this we could simply see that nine times two is eighteen. Therefore, our x is equal to eighteen. Don't forget that our final step is to check our work. So in this case, we can simply take our x and erase it out, then substitute in our 18 and see if this works. Now we know 18 times 1 half is the same as 18 divided by 2, which is 9, and then 9 divided by 1 half, which is the same as 9 times 2, will in fact give us 18, and then we are done. If you did not have time to fill out your worksheet while watching this video the first time, please feel free to watch it again. Thanks for watching!